Kicking off the list at number 10, new tombs. Fresh off the press, folks, Egypt announced only yesterday, <laughs> Egypt, they announced it, yeah, just all of them as a whole. Egypt announced only yesterday that they've discovered five ancient tombs in Saqqara. This is fresh news, this is brand new, only a few people know about this. These tombs date back to the time of the Old Kingdom, around 2700 to 2200 BC. So yeah, they're a touch old. The five tombs were found northeast of the Pyramid of Manir, a sixth dynasty structure. Now these tombs clearly belonged to a group of people with high value. They were obviously officials. Mustafa al-Waziri, head of Egypt's Supreme Antiquities Council has since released additional information on who the tombs belong to. How fun is that? That's how fast we're getting to the bottom of this already. This happened like yesterday and we already know who's in the tombs? Okay, great work. The first one belonged to an ancient official named Iru. There's a deep burial shaft that leads down to a chamber filled with funerary decorations, offering tables, the seven oils. It looked completely untouched. Well, it was. And of course, there was also a limestone sarcophagus. Can't have a tomb without a sarcophagus or two. Number nine, Queen Nerit. Just over a year ago, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities announced the discovery of Queen Nerit, the wife of one King Teddy. Yeah, here we go, AKA the first Pharaoh of Egypt's sixth dynasty. They found her burial shaft. There were coffins, of course, mummies, artifacts, all dating back to the new kingdom, meaning the Saqqar necropolis was used in the late period, but now apparently it was also used in the new kingdom as well. That's the news to us. Perhaps the most questionable find was a four meter long scroll. That was the 17th chapter of the Book of the Dead. Yeah, nothing like finding a chapter of your favorite book. You're like, ah, where's the rest? Let's find them. It's like a national treasure movie, only haunting. As well as funerary masks, miniature boats, and 50 coffins. A lot of coffins in this one. Again, this is the first time 3,000 year old coffins were found in the Saqqara necropolis. This is huge. Number eight, mummified lion cub. Back in 2019, Secrets of the Saqqara Tomb was released, and honestly, what a weekend that was. That was a good time, I remember that one. If you haven't checked it out, I implore you to do so. Officials discovered a 4,400 year old tomb that belonged to a man named Wache at the Saqqara Necropolis. This was pretty close to Cairo, only 30 kilometers away, so you can only imagine this commute ages ago and how beautiful it must have been. This tomb was full of incredible artifacts, mummified animals even. There was a lion cub and over 3,000 ancient artifacts. A lot of stuff, jam packed this one. When digging up our past, it's tricky because you don't wanna ruin any funerary decorations and anything like that and be disrespectful, but you also wanna know who these people were. We wanna know about our history, what happened, what they stood for before their passing, and why they were so important in the first place. Wache and his family remains were studied and it appears malaria claimed the lives of him and his entire family. This is also the first mummified cub we've ever found in history. So as far as findings go, this one was uh, jam packed, jam packed with history. Number seven, King Tut's artifacts. The new Grand Egyptian Museum was set to open in 2018, and then finally it did come 2021. And while that's quite recent, the contents displayed inside certainly are not. For the first time in history, King Tut's ancient belongings, all of them, all the artifacts discovered with him, will be on display. See, prior to this museum being open, we only saw around 150 artifacts from his tomb. They all took pieces on tour, a big Egyptian mummy tour, you know. It was like Kiss's final reunion tour, and then also King Tut's. You're like, oh, who do I see? Ooh. But now this museum, this grand museum, will house thousands of artifacts. That's over 7,000 square meters as well, might I add. What a display this is. If you have a chance to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum, or if you saw this King Tut world tour, I'm jealous, I'm very jealous. We have one museum in Toronto, but it's, you know. The Egypt section there is number six, engraved warnings. It's a part three, so of course we have to include some Paris catacomb creepiness. Yeah, as far as old tombs go, that one's pretty haunting, I'd say, no? These catacombs date back to the late 1700s. Not so ancient, but give me a break, okay? It's part three, I'm doing my best. When the city cemeteries were starting to fill up, and I mean that in a literal sense, officials began moving contents from all over to these abandoned mines. The catacombs were open officially in 1809. What a fun family excursion that must have been, nice. That or the wax museum, they're like, mm, let's take the kids this way, let's go this way. They designed the catacombs with the walls of skulls to ensure that visitors would meditate on death. That's the whole vibe. We go, let's go meditate and think about death for a bit in the walls of skulls. Yeah, I'm sure everybody who visits thinks of nothing else. Pretty confident there. In order to ensure this was the vibe of the room, there's a phrase carved above the entrance and it translates to stop, this is the empire of the dead. I would be like, okay, no problem. Number five, 
necklace from Egyptian afterlife. We're all curious what happens after you die, right? But nobody celebrates the end of your days like the ancient Egyptians. They go hard, they really, they really go for it. Like I mentioned earlier, they would paint doors, leave valuables, any new tomb we discover has thousands of artifacts, hints rather, to what lies beyond. An ancient necropolis was discovered only a few years ago in, of course, Egypt, and it contains dozens of coffins and a necklace that holds a message from the afterlife. Okay, now we're talking. This site is around 2,000 years old, and they're in the process of excavating it right now as we speak. But so far, the tombs and artifacts found belong to an ancient priestess. Nice, a message from the afterlife is pretty spectacular. We want that, we want that. Don't let Rose from Titanic near that one, or else. You know what she'll do with the necklace. You know what she likes doing. Number four, bone compass. Okay, just because we've been talking about graves does not mean these messages or anything have to be written or drawn. Sometimes it can be as simple as leaving animal bones on the ground. Yeah, that ought to speak for itself more than any art. If you see that, you're on your way. I'm not gonna be grave robbing if there's a big old pile of bones oddly placed. What do you guys like, White Walkers, Game of Thrones? What is this, this is terrifying. In St. Augustine, for example, the remains of a donkey were found buried underground. Judging from the skull, it had been clearly hunted down by humans at the time. That's not the weird part here. The weird part is that all these bones have been carefully separated. There's no marks to suggest that any tools were used, so gross, for one. But researchers believe that this wasn't even used for food. The limbs were placed to point north and south. They use this donkey as a compass. How rude is that? Donkeys in the area of Florida in the 17th century, that's not bizarre at all. But the way these bones were laid out, something's afoot here. What's the message here? I mean, obviously besides that way's north. Is there any other message if that? Or are people just bored back in the day? Number three, mythical carvings. Back in 2014, a 17-year-old cemetery was discovered along the Silk Road, which are these ancient trout roads, ancient highways, rather, connecting China and the Roman Empire. In the city of Kucha, now northwest China, this cemetery was found along with 10 ancient tombs, one of which was referred to as M3. All these tombs get their cool nicknames, like KB55, that's pretty good. M3, short, sounds very British. M3, sounds like a British secret agent. M3 didn't have any haunting messages this time around, but it did contain several carvings of mythical creatures. Some creatures that don't even exist. There's a white tiger of the west, the black turtle of the north, the vermilion bird of the south, so far so recognizable, and then there's the azure dragon of the east. Could this mean that dragons are very real? Were very real? Are? I vote R, please be real. These mythical carvings represent different seasons in the heavens, but what could the other six carvings even mean? Maybe the depictions of hell? Number two, chalk drum. Deemed one of the most important pieces of prehistoric art, this chalk drum is 5,000 years old. It was first discovered by archeologists in England back in 2018. It was found with the remains of three humans. It was featured in the World of Stonehenge exhibition. It sounds like an instrument, but really this chalk drum was used as an art piece. Almost like all of our drum sets from when we grew up. I'm like, oh, we don't actually play that. It's just for show. Yeah, I can't do anything on it. That guitar too, can't play that, just for show. Maybe time of your life, if you're lucky, on a good day, but for the most part, for show. British Museum Project Curator recalls the findings as remarkable, of course. This was the artistic language throughout the British Isles 5,000 years ago. Radiocarbon dates back to 2890 BC, around the same time of the construction of Stonehenge. So yeah, pretty old. A chalk ball and bone pin were also found at the site. So again, pretty loaded discovery. And finally, coming in at number one, Celtic Warrior Shield. This one was referred to as the most important British Celtic art object of the millennium, which not a bad title at all. An Iron Age chariot burial was discovered in Yorkshire a few years ago, and researchers were excavating a house development originally in Pocklington, and then they find a soldier's tomb. <laughs> nice. Also, what's the asking price? The soldier was laid on a chariot with a Celtic shield over top. The shield was dated back to 175 BC. See, most Iron Age shields up until this point didn't have scalloped edges, but this one did. Yeah, we thought metal shields were used only for ceremonies, but this one has been repaired. There are clear sword marks. It had been used many, many times in battles. My arm gets tired in class if I raise it for too long, you know? I have to like do the old switcheroo or like hold it up, one of these. This guy was holding a metal shield up all day long. Are you kidding me? I'm gonna go do a thousand push-ups now and fix that light that I moved when I did that hand bit. Number 10, Kui. A very preserved body of a high-ranking nobleman called Kui was discovered in 2019 in a quite a lavish tomb in the necropolis of Saqqara. This is a lot older than we originally thought, too. To date, it's now one of the oldest Egyptian mummies ever discovered. Dated to the Old Kingdom, aka the trial and error period of the mummification process. But after finding Kui, we gotta rewrite some stuff. 
Techniques some 4,000 years ago, a thousand years before they thought this process was even mastered. I'm talking fine linens, quality resin, and of course, a full mummification process. This wasn't thought to have been used for at least like another 999 years. Salima Ikram, head of Egyptology at the American University in Cairo said, quote, books about mummification and the history of the old kingdom will all need to be revised. Sounds like the first four minutes to a banger Nicolas Cage movie to me, doesn't it? Number nine, Ramses the second. As always, if you dig what we do here, make sure to Hulk smash that like button or leave us a comment down below. Ramses the second, AKA Ramses the Great, the third pharaoh of the 19th dynasty and considered one of the greatest ever. And talk about fragile shipping, his mummy was moved a ton of times. Due to looting, of course, not recently either. It's written all over his linens, actually. Moved here, then moved here, finally, well, had to move him again here. Originally buried in the Valley of the Kings, but was then moved by priests to the tomb of Queen Inipi. Then moved again three days later to another tomb. People wanted him, or wanted what was on him. In 2019, Egyptologists unearthed a ka related to Ramses II. A ka is basically a carved statue that would allow the soul to have a place or vehicle on Earth to just sit and chill in. It's only the second ka ever found. This discovery is considered one of the rarest archeological discoveries ever from Egyptologists. Yeah, write that down. Important stuff. Number eight. Egtved girl. In 1921, just outside Egtved, Denmark, a Nordic bronze naturally preserved woman was discovered inside a handcrafted oak tree tree trunk coffin. Her burial has been dated by dendrochronology to 1370 BCE. She was wearing two bronze bracelets, a wool skirt, shirt, and belt, and a large disc plate decorated with spirals and a spike. At her feet, the cremated remains of a young one, unfortunately. By her head, a small birch bark box that contained an awl to puncture holes, various pins, and a boned carved hair comb. And of course, a big bucket of beer. Skull! But who exactly was the egg to fed woman? It remains a mystery. Number seven, Lady Rye. Discovered and unwrapped by Grafton Elliott Smith in 1909, the distinguished mummy perfectly wrapped was apparently an ancient Egyptian woman of the 18th dynasty who served as nursemaid to Queen Amos Nefertari. The most perfect example of embalming that has come down to us from the time of the early 18th dynasty, or perhaps even any period. Now sitting in the Egyptian museum in Cairo, this mid thirties woman is still a pretty big mystery. Her mummified remains were discovered in a Theban tomb and scientists revealed in 2009 using a CAT scan, Lady Rye had a diseased aortic arch and is thus the oldest known mummy with evidence of atherosclerosis. They think that she died around 1530 BCE. The mummy of Amos Inipi, a princess of queen of the late 17th dynasty and also aunt to Amos Nefertari, was found in the outer coffin of Lady Rye. So scientists are sure that she was highly respected, but we got DNA analytics from thousands of years ago, so who knows? Number six, the Tashwanat mummy. During an excavation in 1950 under a rock shelf in Libya, under the scorching sun of the Sahara Desert, scientists think they might have found the world's oldest mummy. Just east of Egypt is a site called Wahamagyag. A small mummified body was found under 5,000 year old sands wrapped beneath 5,000 year old leaves inside an insulated antelope skin sack, perfectly mummified. The ancient site was first excavated in the late 1940s and the small, perfectly preserved Tashwanat mummy is unearthed by the help of University of Rome professor Fabrizio Mori, and it was found 1,500 miles west of the Nile. Using radiocarbon dating, the mummy was thought to be between 5,400 and 5,600 years old, which makes it much older than any of the mummies found over in ancient Egypt. It was believed that the makers of the mummy were cattle herders and occupied North Africa at the time when the Sahara was a savanna. The mummy now resides in Tripoli, Libya. So cattle farmers knew how to embalm and perfectly preserve for 5,000 years. That's what you're telling me here. Number five, Princess of Zhao He. The River Princess, AKA the Beauty of Zhao He, was found in 2003 by archeologists with the Zhao He University studying Ordex Necropolis, a small river cemetery number five, Xinjiang, Western China. She's also known as M11, not because she was a spy with James Bond, but for the tomb that she was found in. She was buried and preserved almost 4,000 years ago. Very well preserved, with clothes, hair, and even eyelashes still intact. 
She's only named Princess due to her amazingly preserved body, not because she was an actual ruler or anything. Archaeologists think that because of the dry, salty conditions of the desert and her tightly sealed boat coffin made of cowhide, it had something to do with the almost flawless process. Cowhide dries out, it shrinks, sealing the coffin airtight. She wasn't embalmed before her death, remember, but mummified naturally due to the climate and method. A happy accident, I guess. A 2014 study revealed that it was now part of the oldest preserved cheese we'd ever find. Yep, a little last minute snack or a little offering to the gods. Both good. Number four, Shinzue. The Marquise of Dai, aka Lady Dai, not that Lady Dai, but this Lady Dai, was a Chinese noblewoman and wife to Li Kang, a chancellor of the Western Han Dynasty. Her mummified body was found buried deep within a hillside in south central China in 1972 by workers digging on an air raid shelter. The room is absolutely filled to the brim with objects that defined her life. Exquisite jewelry, dresses, slippers, beauty products, and even containers of her favorite food. Little Tupperware snack there. A lavish life. Kardashian-like wealth. Her body was found within four rectangle tombs that sat inside each other, then buried deep under layers of charcoal and white clay. A coffin within a coffin. Then wrapped up in more than 20 layers of cloth and bound with silk ribbon and placed inside an airtight coffin. The chamber was then buried deep, deep underground to ensure cool, dry places for the body to rest. She's so well preserved, scientists in 2003 developed a secret compound that was actually injected into her still existing veins to assure further preservation. Yeah, that's not scary at all. Just inject a 3,000 year old mummy with a secret vial. Yeah, I've seen Captain America, I know where this is going. Number three. Talund Man. The Talund Man is a naturally mummified corpse, which at first people thought was just a deceased old man, slowly decaying days after his demise. A man from the Scandinavia pre-Roman Iron Age, actually. 5th century BCE we're talking. Long time ago. He was found in 1950 by Vigo and Emil Hojard while working on the land, preserved as a quote, bog body near the Jutland Peninsula in Denmark. The cause of death has been determined as hanging. Scholars believe that the man was actually a human sacrifice rather than an executed criminal because of the arranged position of his body and eyes and mouth, them being closed and all. His body was arranged in a fetal position, wearing a pointed sheepskin hat and a hide belt around his waist. Additionally, the noose made of animal hide was found beside his naked body. Radiocarbon dating indicate that he died circa 500 BCE. In 1987, the Silkborg Museum reconstructed the body using the skeletal remains where it's on display today. Yeah, it's old, old, like wrinkles and all. Number two, the Lovers of Modena. The Lovers of Modena are a pair of human skeletons well-preserved underground and discovered in 2009 by archaeologists in Modena, Italy. The two skeletons were buried with their hands interlocked and are believed to have been buried between the 4th and 6th century BCE. Originally, it was assumed that the two were composed of a male and a female due to the other specimens and examples that they had found in the region. The discovery of the two buried hand-in-hand -hand or embracing mummies aren't uncommon, though. The Lovers of Valdero, buried over 6,000 years ago, were buried just north in Italy, but male and female. So when archaeologists discovered the fossilized pair in the mud of Modena, they assumed lovers since they were both positioned with their heads staring at each other. Pretty common. After DNA analysis of enamel peptides on their teeth by the University of Bologna, it was confirmed that the remains belonged to two males. Regardless of the nature of the relationship, the Modana skeletons offer a unique representation of the love, bond, brotherhood, or commitment between these two men during the late Italian antiquity period. This is like the original Romeo and Juliet. In love for more than 5,000 years, the pair are now on display at the Civic Museum of Modena. That just made my day. And number one, Spirit Cave. The Spirit Cave mummy is the oldest human mummy found in North America. Officially. I had to obviously save it for my number one spot, and it was discovered in 1940 in Spirit Cave, 13 miles east of Nevada, United States. It was found by husband and wife archaeological team Sidney and Georgia Wheeler. Aged around 40 years old when he died, the Spirit Cave mummy was one of the first to be dated using accelerated mass spectrometer radiocarbon dating. The Wheelers were surveying archaeological sites, and upon finding the cave, they discovered the remains wrapped in tool matting. Wearing moccasins and wrapped in rabbit skin blankets, the wheelers also discovered 67 artifacts from the cave, such as bowls, cloths, carvings, and art. These artifacts were then examined at the Nevada State Museum, where they were initially estimated between 1,500 and 2,000 years old. After the University of California examined 17 spirit cave artifacts, the results say 
that the mummy is approximately 9,500 to 10,000 years old. Yeah, just a bit of a difference there, huh? Just, just a small difference in age. Number 10, gold tongues. 140 miles south of Cairo is El Banasa. Archaeologists just found two sealed tombs containing the remains of a mystery man and a mystery woman, and an array of clues, and of course, treasures. The sealed tomb and sarcophagi made of limestone included scarab amulets, four canopic mummy jars, and more than 400 pieces of pottery and funerary figurines. Yeah, like little guys. The mummy's face was also so well preserved with a perfectly shiny golden tongue still inside his mouth. Ooh, ouch. They just like dip that in or they cut that off and kind of replace it. How's that work? The guy's gonna have a hard time with his L's. The team stumbled upon three golden tongues actually, and archaeologists working in the Alexandria also also discovered gold tongue mummies dating to about 2,000 years ago. Talk about an expensive sentence, huh? Number nine, ginger. As always, if you like what we do here on Bumblebee, throw us a like button, why don't you? Or comment down below. Which one of these creep you out the most? The golden tongues? Dude. It's already got me. The Ghiblian pre-dynastic mummies are six naturally mummified bodies dating to approximately 3400 BCE, or from the late pre-dynastic period of ancient Egypt. Since 1901, the first body excavated has remained on display in the British Museum. The body, of course, was originally nicknamed Ginger due to its very well-preserved, healthy, shiny red hair. This nickname is no longer officially used, of course, because these are people we're talking about here. After the Human Tissue Act of 2004, the British Museum developed policies for proper treatment of human remains, and no longer used nicknames. Ah, yeah, that would have been nice, wouldn't it? Just finding bones making jokes. Ah, yes, look, Limbs McGee. <laughs> I'll, I'll write that down. I'll write that down in here as the official. These six were excavated at the end of the 19th century by Wallace Budge and are the first complete, fully intact pre-dynastic bodies ever discovered to this day. Spooky. Number eight. King Tut. We can't just blow by this list without the scariest event of all. The tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered in 1922 in the Valley of the Kings, led by Egyptologist Howard Carter. Tut's tomb was hidden by debris, luckily, therefore it never got looted throughout the centuries. More than 5,000 objects were found, including the infamous King Tut himself. Egypt, now part of the British rule, gave a feeling of national pride back then, strengthening pharaonism and gluing Egypt's ties to this now ancient world. The publicity, surrounding the excavation intensified when one of the founders actually died of an infection, giving rise to the infamous cursed tomb. But then a couple of other discoverers just started dropping dead and everyone was like, oh yeah, yeah, so that's what cursed means, huh? It says, do not open right here. I see that now, gotcha. Number seven, John Wilkes Booth. Okay, so mummies are usually tied with Egyptian ritual and historical burial purposes, but it wasn't just them though. It's pretty common to preserve a body. John Wilkes Booth was famous for a couple of things. First off, he was one of the world's greatest actors, a true thespian, and of course, a prolific American presidential assassin. Yeah, he shot Lincoln, so. Apparently, he escaped the manhunt, which then apparently toured the US as a mummified version of himself. Wait, what? In 1903, a drifter named David E. George locked himself in a hotel, taking his own life by ingesting a lethal amount of arsenic. According to the news report, George made a confession. I am not David E. George. I am the one who killed the best man that ever lived. I am John Wilkes Booth. The embalmed body was soon fought over and beginning in 1937 and continuing all the way into the 1950s, the mummy was part of Jay Gould's million dollar circus. Yeah, traveling with elephants, acrobats, and high dive dog acts all around the world. According to a PBS report, the mummy itself was actually last seen in the 1970s and maybe in the hands of a private collector. Dude. People are sick. They'll buy and sell literally anything for money and clout. Like, I don't get it, dude. Just like buy and sell Pokemon cards or something, you know? Number six, Nikostratos. A large unknown Greco-Roman tomb was just found this year and excavated in Aswan in South Egypt. An Egyptian-Italian mission led by Patrizia Piacentini, professor of Egyptology and archeology span at the University of Milan. What makes this discovery so cool is the mummies that were discovered. This massive Romanized tomb located in the Aga Khan mausoleum found archeological Logical treasures including offering tables, stone panels littered in hieroglyphics, and one large beautiful copper necklace engraved in Greek scripture with the name Nikostratus on it. The room is overlooked by four burial chambers dug deep into the rock where a beautiful terracotta sarcophagus lay. The architecture alone is puzzling, let alone these mysterious high order young adults that were mummified here. Early studies have indicated so far that the grave includes bodies from more than one family, so 
The mystery question, who was this Nicostratus? Who was he? And who were these unrelated followers that followed him? Number five, tattoos. Okay, so who was the first? We see them everywhere. I don't have any myself, but every which way you look, somebody's tatted head to toe. So who was the first one? Well, a mummy known as the Gablian Man A pushes evidence back about a thousand years. The oldest tattoos were once thought to belong to a South American Chinchoro mummy who had a mustache tattooed onto his face. It was initially thought that he was the oldest specimen of ink. Then an ancient princess was found in Siberia. She holds one of the most well-preserved tattoos ever found on a body. Princess Ukok, a Scythian ruler who sat sadly died of breast cancer around 3,000 years ago. Her body was inked up so heavily and she was buried next to six horses, indicating that she was of high, high royalty. But in 1991, the oldest mummy ever found still holds the Guinness World Record for the oldest tats. Like, 5,000 years old. Otzi the Iceman repped 61 tattoos over his entire body, mostly lines that researchers think was either medicinal or therapeutic. Several needles were tied together and the skin was pricked stick and poke style with ink made from wood smoke and milk. Mix them together, rub them all over the wounds and voila, Travis Barker. Number four, the Lady of Cow. Speaking of being tatted head to toe for reasons we're still unsure of, the Lady of Cow. She was discovered in 2006 by a team of Peruvian archeologists in the El Bru archaeological complex in northern Peru led by Regulo Franco Jordan, one of the National Cultural Institute of Peru. The mummy, which is heavily tattooed head to toe and wrapped in many layers of cloth, was found with a ton of ceremonial items, pottery, weapons, and jewelry. The remains of a second young woman were found as well, and researchers think it could have been a sacrifice, signifying this woman was a ruler of many. Modern autopsy reveals that they were in their mid-20s and died of complications due to pregnancy. They think she died somewhere around 450 BCE, and until they found her, researchers were almost certain that only men held high standing in their culture and power, and that women of this status should never have existed. Well, rewrite them, boys, because Beyonce said it. Who run the world? Girls. Boom, right there. Evidence, sacrifice, tattoos, come on. Number three, killer crocs. In 1899, archaeologists funded by the University of California benefactor Phoebe A. Hurst found hundreds of crocodile mummies on an expedition to northern Egypt. 19 mummified crocodiles are part of the Egyptian collection at the Phoebe A. Hurst Museum of Anthropology at UC Berkeley. These things were a constant threat to ancient Egyptians, and there were a lot of them. Some tomb walls are even decorated head to toe with scenes that show herdsmen performing magical spells to ward off crocodiles before they cross the Nile on wooden boats. It was such a big problem every August when the Nile would flood that there were croc priests who would spend all day mummifying and offering them to the gods. Apparently the Dutch National Museum of Antiques unwrapped and scanned a 3,000 year old croc mummy which were actually 50 little crocodiles positioned in a way to make it look like a giant croc. Like a croc within a croc. And not just them too. The cat-faced goddess Bastet would receive mummified cats while baboons were offered to Thoth, the god of wisdom. Animal mummification was so popular that it became a thriving industry. In one catacomb complex, Egyptologists think there could be as many as 70 million mummified animals crammed into like 30 small rooms. Different times, man, different times. Number two, Chinchoro mummies. On the sandy dunes of the Atacama Desert, the Chilean port city of Arica, bordering Peru, was home to the Chinchoro people. In July, the United Nations Cultural Organization, UNESCO, added hundreds of well-preserved mummies to its World Heritage List. The Chinchoro mummies. First documented in 1917 by German archeologist Max Yule, who had found some of the preserved bodies actually on a beach. Radiocarbon dating eventually showed that the mummies were more than 7,000 years old, more than two millennia older than the more widely known Egyptian mummies. The earliest one, the Achaman, dates to 7020 BCE. They discovered their process of three stages. The black technique was to take the deceased person's body apart, limb by limb, treating it and then reassembling it all in like a Mr. Potato Head style. Then the red technique, which made incisions above the shoulders to remove all internal organs and dry the body out. And finally, the mud coat. Basically, taking the body in a mixture of clay and gypsum in a last coat seal. Then they'd wrap you up. And using sticks to mold and hold a cast of a person's shape, this process was, well, 
like this. Researchers think that Egyptians were like, oh, that's how you do it. I see what the, okay, perfect. I'm just gonna go over there and do that. And number one, Saqqara mummies. In 2019, just 20 miles south of Cairo on the Nile's west bank, there lays a field mixed of sand and earth that make up the ancient site of Saqqara. It's the oldest building known to humans. Like old, old. Older than the three pyramids. And with that comes a new archeological discovery. This year, archeologists just discovered the largest loot of ancient Egypt, ever. Better than Tut's tomb. 150 bronze statues. 250 coffins with mummies in them that date back 3,000 years. Saqqara is Egypt's richest archaeological site. Home to the 4,700 year old Step Pyramid, Egypt's oldest, the site was used as a burial ground. Geophysical surveys have revealed the remains of numerous temples buried under the sand in which we have discovered only a quarter of the actual site. Millions of animal mummies like dogs, cats, cobras, and crocs, even two lion cubs were found mummified. The work site is 500 yards long, and the archaeologists working there have only carried out the first 100 yards of digging. Yeah, I, uh, I'm not gonna lie. I can't wait to see like what next year holds. Like, get some more bulldozers going, you know? Saqqara, Gobekli Tepe, Peru. More scans, more scans. So interesting, but also very terrifying.